happy Sabbath. Happy New Year. I'm saying Happy New Year because this is my first time to be here this year. And I believe the Lord has prepared something great for each one of us. Today is a great day that we have our leadership from the division just to come to celebrate this magazine. I will not talk about it now because the time is coming. I have done what we call quick review of the magazine. It has very important information, not only for Nairobi, Central Church, but the leadership in the entire church, and this is the voice to the voiceless. May the Lord bless the church. Uh, because things will be said about this magazine, it has reflections done by great men and women, taking time to do this work. May the Lord bless them. This morning, as I was coming, my family said, I greet you. Uh, I don't know whether you have received their greetings. Uh, it's my privilege this morning just to speak a few words from the Word of God so that we are all blessed. As I was thinking about this religious liberty, I went through and scanned a lot of materials, both from the church and from other mainstream churches, and also compare some of the constitutions of the world. Allow me to say I'm not an expert of law, but we have lawyers in the room who will share with us some information in the afternoon about state and the church. Number two, as I was going through the Bible, I realized that God himself is the author of freedom and liberty. And this text I chose, I labored, checking through to understand what it means to have religious liberty like today as we worship our living God. And what went to my mind is John chapter 8, verses that to that 2, I extended to 36 and allow me to read, and I invite you to read with me so that I can uh, try to give synopsis of these texts in the context of religious liberty. The word of God says, if you have reached there, you can say amen. Has he spoke these words? Many believed in him. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my words, you are my disciples, he did. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Verse that three, they answered him, We are Abraham's descendants, and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you don't give us freedom or remain us free? Jesus answered them, Most I assuredly, I say unto you, whoever commits sins is a slave of sin, and a slave does not abide in the house forever but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Let's pray. Our great God in heaven this morning, I invite you, Lord, to open our heart to receive what you have prepared for us. Lord, I am a human being. I call upon you, Lord, you may speak on my behalf, that your children will be blessed, that the message will touch my heart and transform me equally as you touch your children this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The implication of this verse, three implications. Implication number one, as you read verse 30, it is about mission. It is about the mission of God, the mission of Jesus. He says, many 
who believed in him. Someone or Jesus himself was preaching and many people followed him. So therefore, he begins with the mission because our God is a missionary God. And from that perspective, Christ brings something else on board when we go to verses that one. And this is another message which he is trying to give us in that one. And he says, then Jesus, when he spoke to these Jews who and believed in him, we told to about them, if you abide in my words, you are my disciples. The second aspect and the concept he is bringing is the concept of discipleship. If you are my disciples, there are certain things you have to do. From a missionary God to a disciple God. Then from that point of view, he moves to the other part which they didn't understand properly. And that is verse 32 and he says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. He brings us another aspect of uh, liberty and freedom. Liberty and freedom. He did not believe, begin with liberty and freedom. He did not stand or start with the expression of an individual, but he begins expressing himself in mission. From mission, he comes to discipleship, and then from discipleship, he talks about now the freedom, because you cannot experience freedom before you know the Lord who has called you. And the calling of the Lord has consequences. All the people who have identified with Jesus Christ have suffered the consequences in many countries and in many foreign missions. And that's why the Lord is calling upon his disciples to unbind in him and to follow what he says. But now, then the complication again comes when they themselves, the Jews who had believed to Jesus Christ, when they say, we have never been a slave of anybody because we are the children of Abraham. Literally, they know that they were slaves in Egypt. They were slaves in Babylon. And we will expound that statement. Now allow me to say this, my dear friends. I try to look at the Constitution of America, and this is what they celebrate every fourth of every month in July. And as I was reading this Constitution, the Americans celebrate their Constitution because this is the new beginning, the dawning of the American freedom, and they say, we are a free nation. That's according to the American. The founding fathers of Americans recognize that liberty could not be preserved unless they acknowledge the dependence of God in their life. And as they were moving from this point of view, Americans feel they are free. The question I pose to their constitution is, as we ask this question, do we have freedom without limits? That's the question I pose this constitution of the super world country. Can we have freedom? we have without limits. Just to refresh your mind, in 1960s, there was the beginning of paradigm shift from that constitution and harass the people who called themselves free thinkers. The free thinkers in this context, they said that we need freedom without rules. They argued that rules makes them not to be free and therefore they don't want any rule at all. Thinking from this perspective, they influenced many religious institutions. They influenced many governments in the world. And this is what they were saying. And this is what their statement was that freedom does not require any law. My question that I want to pose to each one of us today, if we go through the thinkers, the free thinkers, therefore it means true freedom will not be there. And according to them, they need freedom, which means no rules, no laws, no morals, no community standards. However, the moralists came and challenged that position, and this is what the moralists came and said, if everybody will be allowed to do what pleases him. Therefore, the exercise of free love 
will not be there. But this word, it will be implying that there will be free love. You can love anybody, anytime. You can walk out with my wife or somebody's wife. You can walk out with somebody's daughter because we are living in the free world where you can love anybody, anytime. You can go with somebody's wife. Then it says, free drugs. You can take good and bad drugs because we are in free world. It means free sex. You can do anything that you want. And then it means if everybody is allowed to do what he feels and he does the same thing, uh, then we will be ending in anarchy and chaos. As you look from the biblical perspective in the children of Israelite, when God says when everything was doing what was right in his own eyes, God looked at them and he was not happy. Free thinkers bring this concept in mind that we have to challenge this position as Christian because we must stand firm for what the free thinkers are saying and to stand with the moralists who believe in the Bible and what the Bible says. God is a God of mission who is calling each individual to come and worship him. God is a God who has given and freedom and freedom with, with limits. Because of the free moral thinkers, this is what has happened to the world today. Divorce is on the highest rate because people say, I can marry any time I need and I can divorce my wife any time. And that has been populated in the world today. The data can tell you. Today, marriage are in trial. People, they say, before I marry, I must have someone. People are cohabiting, and many constitutions have allowed cohabitation, and they call it marriage. And these are the challenges we are experiencing. Marriages are in trial, my dear friends. Gender identity is another problem. People, they say, my gender is my individual choice. God never created people with individual choice. He created male and female and the period, biblically. But now people have changed the roles. People want to be women, and the women want to be men. That is not the biblical concept. Those are the moral thinkers who have influenced the world, and they are messing up the world. And the church must speak out, and the church has already spoken. Praise be to God, to this church. They have spoken about these things, and the Lord will bless this church. The time we need to speak, and there are times we keep quiet, this is not the time to keep quiet. It is the time to speak what the Lord has impressed in our minds. Dating in our colleges has become rampant where they explore love in this kind of freedom, engaging in a relationship that has ended in short-lived lives. In the university, either you leave the university impregnated or you leave the university with a skill. You leave the university with a disease or you leave a university as a professional. These are the things we have to speak out as the church and to tell the world enough is enough. As we look at the problem of 1960s that has plunged the people into the positive world thinking, they say truth is relative and personal. And then they continue to say that's not enough. They say authority is subjective. It is, subjectivity. it is subjectivity. It is not the truth that we need to know. But freedom has boundaries. Praise be to God. Freedom has boundaries. That's why our Lord has called us as the seventh day and Adventist church. As we celebrate religious liberty Sabbath today, world over, we promote freedom of conscience in every aspect of our life. As we express our belief as a religion, as a church, we need to go back to the fundamental issue that promotes respect of every aspect of human being. Jesus respects every person in terms of mission. Therefore, belief is accepting Jesus Christ. You cannot be coerced because you have believed in Jesus Christ. You can't be coerced because you are an Adventist. You can't be coerced because you are a Muslim. You can't be coerced because you are a Catholic. You can't be coerced because you are a, an atheist in your own way, because that is your choice according to yourself. But God has said we live in the world of pluralism. And as we live in the world of pluralism, 
Let the word of God define our principles of what we believe. Let the word of God speak to us and live by the principles of God himself as he has spoken to us in the world. Let us promote good life that respect and promote freedom for each one. Let us advocate what the Lord has spoken to us in his word. This word again also implies that his audience didn't understand himself. That's why I'm calling it religiously incorrect. Religiously incorrect. Allow me to tell you why I thought through this one. Go back to me in John chapter 8 as we read it together. Let's read again when Jesus said in verse that one. Jesus spoke this once and he said, Then Jesus said to the, to the Jews whom believed in him, If you abide in, my, in, a, abide in my word, you are my disciples, he did. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. According to the Jews, they were free. And Jesus is giving them, the, is introducing them to slavery according to them. And that's why they said, we are the children of Abraham. We have never been slaves. Allow me to take you to the Bible. In Psalms 137, if you can recollect your mind, when they were in the foreign land, they said, how can we sing the songs of Jerusalem? the songs of Zion in a foreign land. The Bible says they hung their, their harps in polars. They could not sing because they were wound of slavery. This is what we call religiously incorrect because they did not understand what Jesus was telling them. To be free indeed is to be free from sin. And according to them, freedom means that we are not under the bondage of every body. The understanding of religious freedom according to the world is to be free, that you no one can hold you responsi responsible. But according to Jesus, every believer must be held responsible by God who created you in his own image. You must obey his laws. You must follow that says the word of God. But today people want to live a free life. They don't want to be held responsible. In fact, this tells me they did not know the truth. That's why I'm calling it religiously incorrect of the understanding of who Jesus is. They went on to tell Jesus, we are free. He did. But Jesus trying to explain in verse 34. That's where now my message comes home. He says, Jesus answered them. Most I assuredly, I say unto you, however commit sins is a slave of sin. The slavery in which Jesus implied in this context is not the slavery that you are under the bondage of somebody, but you are at the bondage of the sin that has taken control of your life. I want to say, my dear friends, religion and religious freedom has no natural bearing, but they have the core ethic statement from the Ten Commandments of God. Those are the principles that begins to help us to understand. It is the declaration of worship where it is exclusive of God who created. In classical Jews' understanding of freedom, it was covenantal. It was covenantal according to the Jews. That permitted some things to be done and that forbidden some things to be done. It is permissive and forbidding according to the understanding. But according to the Lord whom we worship, such religious are driven from God's conscience. And when we understand the conscious mind of God and live by what the Lord has done to us, therefore it means the freedom Jesus has given us is to let the people of God go. And this where Jesus got this statement from Exodus 7.26, talking to Pharaoh, when he said, let my people go. Allow me to say, let the central church go and serve their Lord. Let central church speak against these issues affecting our country today. Men who want to be homosexuals and they baptize it. Those who want to be lesbians, 
And sometimes we don't want to speak in the pulpit because we can be accused. If you are accused, the Lord will be your arbiter. Praise the Lord. Because he's the one who has spoken these things. He created people with limits. But now people have gone ahead and they don't want to, be, to have any limit. In the church today, the issue of freedom, the issue of gender, equality has become a subject of debate when the Lord has spoken, one man, one woman, but people have made this a debate. As they keep on debating upon it, let us uh, leave these things and live within the borders of the Lord who has called us to be individuals, saved by him and him alone. Religious and religion are two things that cannot be left without working together. The true faith remains what Jesus says to ourselves. Allow me to take you to another thing to say. Apart from uh, being sinners, God has given us a gift of freeing us from sin and making us his people according to what he says. Now, allow me to say something else. That is very important for you possibly to consider and to see whether it makes sense to you as you live in this world. And you consider, apart from having the three concepts we have talked about, mission, discipleship, and freedom, then I want to talk something about what happened somewhere. One father had two children, daughters, and they decided they need to put boundaries in their family on how to live. And they said that the father, you have given us many laws in this house, we want freedom. Then the father said, no problem, you can have the freedom you need in your own house. This is your home, you can have your freedom. Let everyone have a key, you can open the gate anytime you want to come home. You can have the key for every room. When you want to come in, you can open and do what you want to do. You can come anytime in the house as you, you wish. You can cook at your own time. And that is the new law they began in their home. So they started. The first daughter could sit there, not talking to the sister, and they were not talking to their father. And when anyone comes in at home, anytime you need to come in the middle of the night, you can cook and eat and go and sleep. If you have eaten where you have come from, no problem. Then daddy could come in his own time and sleeps, and they wake up in the morning and they leave the house and go their way. The first month ended. The second month ended, then the daughter said, Father, let's review the laws again. They want to live in a world without laws and boundaries. They said, Father, let us review the boundaries again, and let's go back to where we started. At least with the laws, we could talk to each other. With the laws, we could sit together in a table and pray together. With the laws, we could cook together as we talk, but now without laws, no one is talking to each other. Then Dan asked them again, my daughters, it is true, what do you want us to do? They said, let us go back to the laws where we began. God is calling the world to go back to his commandment because the commandment described the character of God. Any human being who wants to live without the law of God will think as a moral thinker, no law, no moral issues we need to have, but the Lord is calling us to have those morals. That's why Jesus says, liberation from sin and death is what we need today. We need to examine our heart. We need to look at the state and what the state are saying, and we need to, re to redefine our personal and social relationship as we live with human beings. We need, my dear friends, to understand the journey of freedom began with God himself. The journey of freedom goes back to God himself. And God is calling upon the men and women to say no to all moral issues, including the corruption that we experience in this world. I was reading and I went to check through the religious leaders of our time who spoke against many things, the like of Archbishop Muge, who were killed because of standing for what is right. People like Enjoya, who suffered in the hands of men because of speaking the truth. People like uh, Archbishop Guitari of this country for speaking their mind. It is time for us Adventists also to speak when at our time comes to speak. We should not be quiet all the time when we need to speak. We need the world to know we have a voice, and this voice cannot be ignored. Praise be to God. 
This voice, my dear friends, cannot be ignored. We must speak out candidly and tell the world we are here, we live in the world of pluralism, and we must respect one another as we live in this world of pluralism. And these guys, they say that the world today is so corrupt. People are living in the corrupt world. Even in the churches, there is corruption. But the Bible, and they spoke and said, men want to get money in the context of helping the poor. People want to make sure that they are richer and we have the poor people. Jesus was telling you, I'm calling you not only to be free from sin, but also to have the freedom that respect other people and also respect the nation. It is our time to speak as the church. When the government does something wrong, we must come out and say, this is wrong. But we cannot keep quiet all the time and say, the Lord will help us. Yes, it is true. The Lord will help us, but we need to speak out. If we keep quiet, God will bring other people somewhere to speak. I want to give you some scenarios in the Bible. When people kept quiet, there is someone in the Bible by the name Esther. She went to the king and talked to the king. And she spoke to the king because the uncle said, if you don't go to the king and talk to the king, the Lord will bring another salvation from somewhere else. The church must speak out. The elders, we must speak out. We must say no to evil things, hallelujah. And we must up uphold the principles of the Lord. We need people like Nehemiah. Nehemiah who stood to restore the church, to restore the nation, and to build up the kingdom of God again when even religious leaders and ran away, Nehemiah stood alone and God used him. We need people like Ezra. Men who stood and say, we need to return back to the principles of God. We need to return back to the commandment of God. And in Ezra 3.10, when you read that verse, it says, he spoke to the people. He read to them the constitution of God, the Ten Commandments. And when they understood the commandment, they cried and they raised their voices and they said, we have heard, we want to obey, we want to submit. I'm calling upon ourselves, men who are here today and women, that we live by the principles of God, that we don't need to fear anyone because the Lord has given us this freedom of expression. He has given us liberty to worship. We don't need to shy off, but we need to talk out, out and at the same time respect others because they have also their right. My dear friends, in my synopsis, I could say freedom has limits has borders and has boundaries. Let respect those freedoms which has limits, which has boundaries, and which has boundaries. And one of them is one man, one woman, period. You can quote me, I stand with what the Bible says. One man, one woman. Anything else beyond that is the moral thinking of this world that we live where people want to be given freedom even where the freedom is not. Now, no genuine freedom, my dear friends, without rules. Even in your own house, you need rules with your children. You need to tell them how they should live in your house. Rules are very important. Rules are a part of God's kingdom, and rules are a part of God is telling them. That's why Jesus was telling the Jews here, if you abide in me, if you follow my words, and if you are my word sticks into you, my dear friends, I want to tell you, you will be free and free indeed. Freedom does not, freedom are not defined by the constitutions of the world. Allow me to say this again. Freedom cannot be defined by the constitutions of the world. Even our country cannot define our constitution. Our rights and privileges are defined by God, the creator. We need to uphold those ones and to remind the lawmakers that they cannot give freedom by interpreting the law. They need to go back to God and interpret the law with God, the creator of the universe. That's what I call genuine freedom that emanates from God himself. Freedom and the truth can only be exercised in love. We need to love God himself. And as we love God who is our creator then, he will be with us. He will use us the way he would want to use us. He will stand with us in times of need. And this is what we call good news. 
the moral thinkers are promoting bad news in the life of this world. When they tell people freedom is to do anything you want to do. Moralists are saying freedom has limit. God is saying freedom has limit. But you have to exercise them within the love of God. And God says, if you love me, indeed if you love me, you will keep my commandment. You cannot, nobody can help you to keep the commandment of God by making laws. We can only keep the commandment of God by subscribing to the love of God who has called us to love him, who is the creator of the universe. Freedom. My dear friend, it's a permanent status guaranteed by the Creator. And the Creator has guaranteed each one of us the freedom. What we need to do is to surrender ourselves to Him and our firm, our faith in Him. You know, faith is to let the Word of God to do what it says. If you believe in God, even in your place of work, and you stand with the Lord, He will stand with you. When you stand with God and you speak out from the beginning of the life, he will move with you. He will change things in your life. My dear friends, allow me to say that freedom does not come by accident. Freedom is the gift given to us by God himself. Freedom is to be bound in a relationship with our God. The Lord who has defined our intimacy relationship with him. This God who has called me, my dear friends, has given me freedom to express myself with respect. This God who has called me, he wants me to remain faithful to him, to keep his commandment not because they are his laws, but because the commandment define the love of God in myself. They help me to have the character, the character that is built in the love of God himself. My dear friends, there is nothing else we can do in this world than to uphold what the Lord says. There is nothing in this world that can give me peace of mind but to come and say, God, here I am your son. Here I am your daughter. Use me the way you would want to use me. Freedom is to sit down, to reflect, and ask yourself, am I living in this? Allow me to go now the same verses 35 and 36 as we come to the end. This is what the Bible says, verses 34 and 35 and 36 says, And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. My dear friends, Jesus is introducing the concept of slave and a master. And he says a slave does not abide in the house of the master forever. He can be sold out. He can be sold out and that now will be breaching the, the freedom of that individual because you can sell him. But Jesus says when you come to me, you will not only have the freedom of expression in my house, but you will be free indeed in my house. You will eat anything you want to eat. What do you want to eat with Jesus in heaven? One of the things that I admire when I go to heaven, I want to see the fruit that Adam and Eve ate, and they were chased from the garden of heaven, that I can go back and eat that fruit I, I lost because of this thinking, moral thinking, and this thing that was free thinking for this world to go to the direction it has gone. When I go to heaven, I want to see how God created this world and how I can be united to Adam before sin and look at the Adam after sin and then Adam after being delivered by God himself. And dear friends, when I go to heaven, I want to see how God defines freedom without li with limits, but also freedom that I can express myself in God's free will. Finally, allow me to say that God has liberated me from sin, and that is what makes me to be who I am, and that what makes you to be what you are. God has come today to give you freedom. God has come today to deliver you from all the evil forces of this world. Can you say amen? God has called you to tell you today, stand firm and speak what you know. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. 
If you identify with us kind of uh, prayer, can you stand that we can pray together? Let's pray as we hear the Lord speak to us again. Let's pray. Our Father and our God in heaven, what a privilege you have given us to know that freedom begins with you. You have called us, Lord, to identify with what you have given us that we may live as your children. Lord, forgive us where we have kept quiet when we are supposed to speak, that we may now learn to speak when the time comes for us to speak. Lord, humble ourselves to live according to your will and wishes. Oh, Lord, I pray that you may bless this church. They have spoken through a magazine. They may not go to the media and speak, but this magazine will reach to many people in the world. Lord, bless the leadership of this church. Bless this church. Bless our union. Bless our division. Bless our general conference for this religious liberty we have experienced for over 100 years. Oh, Lord, I call upon you to be with us and help us, Lord, to live in according to your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you.